casting flexible polyurethane. In this video, we're going to be pouring up some FP40 flexible polyurethane, and we'll be pouring this into a TC5110F platinum silicone mold. In this mold, you might remember from a previous tutorial where we molded a coffee cup, and I mentioned then that we would probably come back to that mold, and here we are. So again, in this video, we're going to be pouring up a copy in FP40, and then we're going to pour up a softer copy by mixing it with SC22. SC22 is a softening agent that can be used to soften polyurethanes. And this is an important bit of knowledge to have, to know how you can take existing formulas and modify them to be softer, just in case you need a softer rubber that might be between other products that are already out there. Now, FP40 is a 40 Shore A, and just quick refresher, here is the Shore A scale. And the Shore A scale, of course, measures very soft materials up to very firm materials. So the A scale, the one in red, measures at the low end, like human skin, to a 20 would be about like a rubber band, a 40 would be about a pencil eraser, 70 would be like a car tire, and then up in the 95 range, like a caster wheel. Now the FP series ranges from a 40 Shore A up to about a 90 Shore A. And FP of course stands for fast production. These are all designed for product development applications where you need to turn around quick casts of rubber or flexible parts. And of course at the low end we have the FP40 we'll be using in this video. And then it goes FP50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. So there's a nice range to choose from if you're prototyping items that need to be somewhat flexible all the way up to semi-rigid. Now for our coffee cup, I wanted something fairly soft, so we're going to be using the FP40. And this of course has a 1A to 2B mix ratio. Again, this is fast production, so four to four and a half minutes working time at room temperature, and then around a 50 to 90 minute demold time, again at room temperature. FP40 also cures to about a 40 Shore A softness, so about like the sole of a running shoe or a pencil eraser, and it has a nice low mixed viscosity of 1100 centipoise. Now there's several additives that can be used to adjust the FP series and customize your formula. And the main additives you need to know about, there's more than just these, but the main ones you wanna know about for this video is the colors 6800 and 6900 pigments. Of course, the 6900 pigments are the new phthalate free pigments and the 7400 dyes for translucent colors. And then of course we have the vanilla fragrance, the SC30 and the SC22 softening agent. And the SC30 vanilla fragrance is really helpful when you're doing product development and producing prototypes that you don't want to smell like polyurethane. Now the casting process for FP40 is fairly straightforward. Remember this is a two to one mix ratio by weight. And also you wanna make sure anytime the label says shake or stir before use, make sure you do exactly that. So you'll see on the part B, it says shake or stir before use. So we're gonna shake that up and then we're going to dispense 300 grams of part B. And then of course, this being a two to one mix ratio, that means we'll follow that up with 150 grams of part A. And this being a polyurethane, it is affected by heat and humidity. So you wanna make sure you're working in a room temperature environment with low humidity. Now, once we've measured out our part B, we're ready to add our pigment and our vanilla fragrance. Now for most formulas, you can add one to 2% of the total mass of the batch you're mixing up in pigment. Remember, if you start to exceed that, that can start to change your physical properties. And now ready to add the SC30 vanilla fragrance. And you only need to add a few drops. You don't even need 1% in order to get the vanilla fragrance. Now we're mixing these into the part B before we add our part A. And the reason for that is this is a fast setting formula. So all the FP series are designed for fast casting applications. So by mixing those additives into the B first, that makes sure we get the maximum amount of working time. Now, once we have the components stirred into the part B, we're ready to add the part A. And remember, this is a two to one mix ratio by weight. So we have two parts of B to one part A. So we had 300 grams of part B, and now we're adding 150 grams of part A. 
Now for mixing, you could obviously use a regular standard stir stick, but here I'm using a stainless steel spatula. And the reason I'm using that is a steel spatula like this is easy to clean up and reuse so it minimizes waste, but also it doesn't absorb moisture out of the air. If you're in a really humid environment, like in the south, uh, southeast especially, there's a chance for stir sticks to absorb moisture out of the air and then transfer that moisture to your casting material. So be very careful about that. Now, even though this is a fast setting polyurethane rubber, there is enough working time. If you have a fast vacuum chamber, you can pull a vacuum on this before you pour it, or you can put this in a pressure pot and subject it to pressure. Now, the part we're pouring up here is simple enough. We're not going to do that, but uh, there is enough of a working time. Again, if you're at room temperature, then you can get every bit of that working time out of this product. Now I'm pouring at a slight angle here to make sure I get the rubber up into that uh, handle of the coffee cup. And I've got another little mold standing by, so I'm going to pour up one of my little sample ears. And these are both silicone molds, so the 5110F does not require mold release. But if you are going to use a mold release, make sure you use one that can be removed later if you're going to be painting the finished part. Now this is about an hour later. And I'm going to demold our ear first because that's the less critical of the two parts. So I'm able to demold that before I do the more critical coffee mug. So there we have our nice 40 Shore A ear. And you see that's nice and flexible. And now ready to demold that coffee cup. And that's a kind of a funky mold. So those of you who didn't see the video where we made that mold, I would highly recommend checking that out. And this demold process will make a little bit more sense. And again, I'll link that on the end screen. And now we have our coffee cup cast ready to go. Now, obviously, this is not for drinking coffee. Uh, FP40, FP series rubbers are not uh, for food applications. This is strictly for prototyping, prop making, and that sort of thing. So this is more of a stump prop to use around here in my shop. So I'm going to clean up the inside of that seam with a scalpel. And now we have our finished cast rubber part. Now the 40 Shore A material works well for this, but since I wanted to make a soft kind of action stump prop here out of this coffee mug, I wanted something a little bit softer than that 40 Shore A. So I decided to do a second cast softening this with SC22. And the SC22 is a kind of general purpose softening agent for BJB flexible rubbers. And I say BJB flexible rubbers because this one is specific, this softening agent is specific to BJB formulas. Now for the softer cast, I wanted to see if I could lower the FP40 down to around a Shore A20. And I got lucky with the first cast. So here I've measured out 200 grams of part B of FP40 and I'm adding my white pigment to that. Again, that's the uh, 6900 phthalate free pigment. And then, like before, I'm mixing my additives just with the part B first. So I make sure I get plenty of working time out of this. And you'll notice I checked the label and shook up that SC22 before I dispensed it out of that jug. Always really important to make sure if it says shake it up first, make sure you shake it up so that all of the chemicals in there, all of the magic is evenly distributed. So what I've got here is 200 grams of part B, 100 grams of SC22, and once I get those mixed up, I'm going to add the 100 grams of part A. And again, really important to remember that as soon as we add the part A, the clock starts ticking. So if you're new to fast setting materials, always a good idea to set your smartphone timer for about four minutes or so. Make sure you get everything properly mixed and poured into the mold well within that working time. Now, just like the previous batch, we want to make sure we stir that up without introducing any moisture. And that, of course, is where that stainless steel spatula comes into play. So just be mindful of that anytime you're working in a human environment that uh, wooden stir sticks are a chance to introduce moisture into both resins as well as polyurethane rubbers. Now, an important note about SC22 is it will lower the viscosity a little bit in a lot of these formulas, but it doesn't really change the working time. So there's sometimes when you plasticize a material and that extends the working time a little bit, not so here. This will still be a very fast setting material. Now I do, uh, just to be on the safe side, I let my parts sit a little bit longer than I do when they're uh, not plasticized like this. 
but uh, typically your demold time and your working time are pretty similar to uh, when you're using the product without the softening agent. Now this was definitely not the top end of softener that you could add to this formula. So I'm going to talk to the BJB chemist and see how far I can push this. And I'm going to come back to this in a future video and see how far this can be softened uh, for other effects like this, for skins and other times when you need FP series to be even softer than what's readily available. So here I'm just trimming out the uh, seam on the inside of that coffee cup handle. And now we have our coffee cup action props ready to go. And if you want to see a little bit more about that, check the links in the end screen. You'll see where I also did this by casting uh, silicone into the same mold. So there's my two prop coffee cups. See the one on the right is a little extra wiggly, a little softer, so a little safer to throw at my children. And now we have that really soft ear on the left and the slightly firmer ear on the right. So we were able to, to drop that down a full 20 points on the A scale by doing that ratio of uh, 200B to 100SC22 to 100 part A. Now I could tell by the feel of the part that it was a lot softer than the original part, but I went ahead and broke out my Shore A gauge and sure enough this did measure as Shore A20 on the A scale. Now, for those of you doing product development applications or prop making or cosplay pieces where you need to paint the finished part, it's real important to know about the SC89 paint. This is a clear paint base that has a high elongation and sticks beautifully to cast flexible polyurethane parts. And then the companion product, of course, the SC89 thinner. Now, SC89 comes clear, but you can pigment it with the 6800 or 6900 pigments, but more about that in a future video just on painting. Now, as always, I'll link to all of the materials used in the video description, so be sure to check those out. And of course, be sure to like and subscribe and comment for the algorithm and check the end screen for the videos covering the coffee cup mold as well as the original silicone coffee cup cast. And as always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.